Howdy folks, welcome back, thanks for tuning back in and we're going to get on some, release some roughing work on that left side, um, you know, side panel. I'm going to just call it the side panel, side fairing panel, whatever you want. I'm just going to call it side panel for the VFR 750. And you can tell that because it says VFR 750. <laughs> and I showed you this in the teaser at the end of the last video, the broken piece here. And then I'm going to basically, basically I'm going to explain uh, coming up here very shortly, how I'm going to kind of figure out the size of this thing and what it needs to be with some referencing. There's two ways I could deal with this, really three. Number one way that I'm going to attempt is to, you know, repair this. The second way would be to find another used one and just replace it and paint it or whatever. And the third option is there's a company called AirTech Streamlining out in California that makes these and I've dealt with them before I had new side panels for the ZX10 uh, they don't come with any holes anything at all um, you have to put the holes in and it's not hard but that's a whole nother video and we're not going to go that route we're going to go with trying to repair this one all right so material choice let me reach across you here and this is what I got in the mail today it's that one eighth of an inch thick fiberglass material but this is actually like board and I thought it was something different I don't think this is going to work because we're going to need to bend something like this now I don't know if I can heat bend it or not but this is almost like a I mean this feels like a really thin piece of sheetrock you know it's got some weight to it as well so we're going to set that aside right now use it for something else and I think we're going to end up trying to use that other Suzuki Jixer, whatever the hell it was from, side panel. But first things first. First thing I did, as I did on the uh, main fairing, is I cleaned this all up. There is a uh, foam piece that goes here that's gone because it was falling apart, similar to the one, and pretty much exactly the same material, as the one in the carburetor video that's on top of the um, area between the radiator and the area that the air box sits. Uh, and you can look at that video to see what I mean. And I replaced that, and I replaced that simply with some um, air filter foam. I'm not going to do that here. I'm not going to put a piece of air filter foam that close to the exhaust radiant heat. I'll come up with something. I'm thinking that's more of a sound deadening material as opposed to a heat shield or a heat material because it's such a small area. It could be for heat, but I seriously doubt it. it's just too small of a footprint for that but anyway it's gone the other thing is and I didn't realize this until just a little while ago there's supposed to be vents or ducts better word uh, vent ducts on here and they go to these little standoffs here lock into that pin obviously I don't have those I'm gonna get those eventually but for now it's not important because we're not going to need them to do what we need to do to get this panel repaired and back mounted on the bike we can do you know that crap anytime we want so this is nice and clean ready to go these tangs down here articulate with the other side kind of just really just clip it in and uh, they just do their thing to hold them together instead of having like fasteners they're going to come into play a little later but it will be probably either later on in this video or a different one when we actually get this thing up on the bike because we're going to have to do is, I should probably explain that. We're going to do some roughing work right now, like I said. But when we get to more semi-finish and finish work, we're going to have to put the, number one, the main fairing on, and then the right side fairing, number two, so we can actually hook it to these guys, and then start laying out more detail when this one's in place, because it has to jive with the main fairing up here. And this one goes to a standoff on the actual frame. I don't have that mounted right now. I knew where that went. It comes out from the frame and it would go to here with a bolt. And I, I have that and I have all this stuff. So it's not a big deal. The big deal is this is going to be a real prick to lay out even roughly. And that segues into how I'm going to determine the size of this thing. So let me lay some stuff out and show you what I'm going to use for that. I got some photos that I printed out. This is uh, screen captures from a video 
of a gentleman that has a super nice RC24, same bike, same year, uh, with some racing mods, I believe. He did a walk around, and I took some screenshots of it and printed those out. They're going to be the basis for some measurements. So what I mean by that is we're going to take some known reference on these drawings, and we're going to sample that, like with a pair of calipers, and then measure that. And then we can utilize that, uh, calculate it over in real time to the real item in real life. For example, there's that bolt right there. And then we can use that as a, a to come up with a segment of how many of those we need to move over from point A to point B. So you can call them what you want. You can call them bananas. You can call them anything. It doesn't matter. So we're going to utilize that. Now, we have a little bit of a helper here. And this is a little, going to be a little difficult to show you, but I will try my best in the broken piece. It is right here, you see this edge is got, let me see if I can get it in the light. Yeah, you see that kind of a radius that was made into this when it was, um, you know, when this was formed. Okay, that is the edge of that hole. That is the very edge, probably this side of it. So that we know is where that's supposed to go. Now we're going to end up obliterating that when we sand this down and flatten it out. So to, to deal with that, since we kind of know where the edge of that hole is, and again, that's going to be this right there. So it's kind of like that. You see what I mean? Kind of like that edge right there. Now naturally, this is kind of at a different angle because it's looking, you know, down at it, but, you know, it, that's the edge of that hole right there. So we kind of know that that's where it's going to go. Actually, it'd be more like this. But you get my drift. Right now, it's roughing. Well, I don't want to lose this completely, so what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to put a piece of tape on this that's going to stay throughout the entire process, and we'll measure over to that, and then we'll note that. And that way we have a reference to come back to that when we get the semi-finish point, I guess, to know where approximately where that hole is going to be. So we'll do that first. Then we can start knocking this down. we got to get this flat at approximately this angle. And then we can go on a little bit further, and I'll show you what we're going to do with measuring that kind of thing and see what we're going to do for referencing. Not a whole lot to reference on here, but knowing that that is the hole or the edge of it, and we come up with a reference from any point on here, we'll make a kind of an even number. Then we can work from there and decide where we're going to go with some of the features that we need to, you know, when we rough cut out a piece. I'm going to go at 8 inches from here to the edge of that area, which is the depression, because that bolt is at a little different angle, as you can see, the way they put it in there. I don't know how we're going to solve that yet, but I'll come up with something. And so that'll just give us a reference. Now I put a little dotted line here, which is essentially parallel with the, not the edge, but this uh, feature, the bend. And that gives us an idea where we put a straight edge in the future to run that over. Uh, it, you know, we're, we're going to actually use the word bolts onto the bike to finalize where that hole goes. Because remember, this is all roughing at this point. So, okay, let me, let me knock this down. We'll get it flat. And then we'll come back and do um, some other stuff with, you know, layout and so forth. Alright, that's pretty flat, so that's good enough for now. Okay, now, let's take a look at the pictures. We're going to take a bolt, like that. We're going to measure it, what it is in real life. Just under three quarters, 730 thousandths, alright? We use the calipers, and we're going to pick up the size of it on the picture. And that's about it right there. So now we know that this bolt in the picture, or the head of the screw rather, it's a screw, is that wide in the picture and we know what it is in real life all right so now what we can do is we can take this from other types of references and we can move over and see where we need to go all right so in this case what I'd like to know is I'd like to know how long this is going to be to this right there to this feature where it curves and goes down and gets thinner 
that's where we're going to start figuring that out. Because I want to, I want to know how long this is going to be over to here. Because I need to know that so if I can see my piece of material, that other side cover, if you haven't already guessed, um, is going to fit. I take this and I'm just grab. I already did it once, and I just grab the edge of that right on the edge of it, and I got one, two, three, four, five six, seven, and we're going to go right to the middle of that curve, eight. So right to the middle of this turn right here, and this is all roughing, so it's by eye, there's eight of those. But we're dealing with real world, so we're going to go 730,000, so let's just do, yeah, 730, we're going to multiply that times eight, so what is that, about five and 13 sixteenths or so, but it doesn't matter, I'm just going to put a mark on the ruler. All right, and then what I can do is, because remember, we're going off of the real size of this. We know how many of that in the picture goes to there, but we don't use that size. We use this size because we're extrapolating it over to larger size here. All right, so if we go from there to there, then we know approximately we need to come out and go down to there. I'm thinking that there, there is a an angle of the dangle to put this where we can actually get this to work. And I want to try to save this bottom edge here because it's rolled over a little bit like the bottom. You know, it's folded when they molded this thing. So let's do it this way. Let's just put that right there and run this about here and be about right there where it comes down. So it would probably be angled about that. Yeah, so we're, we're going to be short. Yeah, that's a problem. So let's move it out to here. Because I'm thinking if we just get this in the right spot. Yeah, see right there. I think, see this slopes down. It, this, this does not come straight. Okay, this does not come straight out like this. This tapers downwards. You can see that in the picture. I don't know that amount yet. We're going to have to kind of figure that out. But if we put this like that, where it just grabs that edge, and it's pretty parallel with it down here, and we go to the center, and we use that reference, and it slopes down a little bit from the center, might just have enough to fudge it. I mean, it's going to be really close. But like I said, it might just have enough. The other alternative is to try that, but it doesn't give me enough up in here. So if we go right to the edge there, so up the edge right there and right there, go to the center. If our drawing is right, it's going to be tight. But remember, it does slope downwards. You can see from the photo that it has somewhat of a downward slope away from it. Tapers. Probably not that much though. So I don't know. I don't know yet. It would have to taper down that much. You have to follow this line essentially right there. And then go down to about there and then cut down. And would we have enough to extend it out? I don't know. So this is the dilemma we have here because we got to figure out a way to do this. Now here's another way we can do it is just turn it this way and capture the edge of it and go out to there. But again, we run into the same problem where we're at that limit. But we're right on the edge. Oh, actually, I'm, I'm off. We're, yeah, this, this might be a little bit of a better option right here. So right to the center, to that mark, if we followed that angle, even slightly up, it would capture about right here. We can go straight down, essentially, and then come out and come down and duplicate that edge. Remember, this is looking downwards at it, so we have to kind of factor that in. But you get the idea where we can maybe figure out how to rough it in. Up here, we don't have to worry about. We only have to worry about right there where it starts to come around. And again, right to the center, if we even go slightly higher and we catch it right about there where that decal is right now, I think that would be the right amount to come down, we would cut this out, because this is at an angle, we want more of a right angle. 
So I, I honestly think this piece is going to work or it'll be close enough, but it's going to be real delicate on, you know, cutting this thing and making sure you get it right first time. There is absolutely no room for error on this, none whatsoever. So that's, that's my line of thinking, and I think that's where we're going to go with, because we maintain the bottom edge here. We have that bottom edge where we can kind of duplicate how it kind of wraps around a little bit. And if we just go right to the edge of this one, go up to there, we might just be able to catch it. So that's where I'm going with this. I think we're going to try this piece and, uh, and cut it up and see what we can render out of it as far as a piece that might act as a filler. So what we're going to do next is come up with uh, tracing on this, favoring as much material as possible, and then we're going to cut it out and see how it looks. Okay, folks, next day, and uh, I hope the first part of this video is actually somewhat clear because I'll have to look at it in editing, in editing rather. I, I'm, whew, boy, was I tired yesterday. I just didn't sleep good the night before that. And Number one, I'm 100% sure I'm going to try this piece. Number two, I'm 100% sure I'm not 100% sure it's going to work. <laughs> here's, here's what I figure we're going to do. Um, I am going to take this piece, and I think it's going to work pretty well because we, we're going to end up using this edge here to our advantage. Let me get you over this way a little bit better. We're going to use this curve and this edge here, right here, this, this uh, part I should say, to our advantage. To kind of duplicate uh, this part there down below, uh, this one here. Remember, we're looking down at it, but if you were to flip it this way, it would look more like this. So if we duplicated that, you see if we look down at it, it's very similar to looking down at that. All right. So we're going to use this piece essentially as that piece and the lower part. And then we'll bring this out to a point where it's square with the bottom, or parallel, I should say, with the bottom. Clamp it, and then I'll start making some, um, some you know, layout lines with marker or something. And then uh, we'll just really maximize the amount of material we have. But the parallelism down here is going to be our reference to keep this straight. Because we're going to maintain this little bent edge, this rotated edge, to match that. That'll actually match that pretty well. Uh, we can keep a little of this on this side to finish it out. Wherever we do finish it out, actually, it won't be there. It'll probably be down somewhere here, all the way down to where it cuts off. And this may need to be thinner. I don't know yet. So we may be negating that, but we're going to leave it big to start with. Now off camera what I did was I took the decal off just a while ago, got a little aggressive with the heat gun. When you take these decals off, and this is of course a remnant of it, you, you know you try the least aggressive thing first and that would be a hair dryer and a hair dryer wouldn't even touch this. So I hit it with the heat gun on low and got it pretty hot and I started here but you know this is what you have to watch out for when you take decals off of plastic. And the other thing is, if you want to, if you look down it, you see I wet sanded it with 800 grit. Um, you can never be 100% sure even what chemicals you get in all the little spots of glue off. And you go to repaint that with even a touch of that glue on there, it's going to fish eye like boom, big time. So I take a wet, wet or dry, you know, like 800 grit, uh, 600 grit, even up to 1,000 if you want to make it finer. We'll do that later, of course, once it's assembled or fixed and then we'll get it ready for paint but you, you, you got to wet sand it. you got to use some sort of an abrasive to, to get down below that initial surface where that glue was and to make sure it's all gone so we did that so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rig up some way to clamp this as even and straight or parallel to the bottom as possible uh, and then we're going to make some layout lines in line down here Close enough for sure. Remember, we're only coming out to about that far. So over here, I don't care. Out here, doesn't matter. About from here up does, so I'm kind of splitting the difference on that one. Got it clamped up pretty good. Right on the edge up here, you see? So that's fine, because we'll just catch that edge. This is going to be a, a uh, an exercise in precision to a degree, and then it won't be into another degree.
Okay, let's get back to the task at hand. I, I like to start with the parts that I absolutely know, and then, you know, what I know is we have a line here that we're going to have to cut to, and then we'll work with the kind of this taper here. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet as far as to get kind of a roundish, straightish line. So let's go ahead and just mark this one for now. And then um, how we're going to do this is, I'm <laughs> got to figure this out. I'm going to have to find something that, you know, I don't want to freehand this. I guess I could, but I'm going to try to get a little closer than freehanding it. So let me see what I can figure out to do that. How about a hacksaw blade? When you bend them, they bend uniformly. And a high carbon steel deal. And we're going to just do this, wedge it up against there. Like my old man used to say, measure twice because today I forgot my putting on tool. So what we're going to do is get a nice little bend in there. And you know darn well it's going to go down about that far. So let's make our work a little less hectic. You know, based on the drawing, it almost straightens out once it makes the curve. So now, um, all we're really going to do at this point is come down. Uh, it's pretty straight here. As you can see on the drawing, because this one is looking right down at it. This is a good good one. When it makes a turn, and of course our turn I think will be lower, it goes pretty much straight down, so a little bit off this line. I wish I could keep this bend here, but I mean we can make this whatever we want. We don't have to make it exactly as to what you know the Honda Imagineers wanted when they did these panels. We're not going to have a clearance issue in here. Really nothing in there. This is actually a cutaway, however, for the side stand. So let me retract that comment and say we do have a clearance issue. That's probably why this is at a right angle and certainly why the cutaway is there in the first place. So that's your clearance for the side stand. So we are going to have to probably come down straighter than this and then come over to that line right there. Yeah, hmm. but uh, it is what it is, huh? Okay, if you look at this curve up here, which is that one up there. Now, if we lay that curve into the drawing, you see how I'm doing it in your perspective, you can kind of see that right there. This actually cuts in a little bit. Cuts in a little bit instead of being out. And you can kind of see that here to it cuts in. So relative to this angle, that angle is this way. So let's say that this is a five degree angle this way. This is probably like a five or an eight degree angle the other way. So we're going to have to kind of guesstimate that again. You can hold up your drawing to it. You get an idea that it's got to go basically like that and then come in. Because remember this is all part of it. It was all part of the one assembly. We have to ignore this line right now, except we can't come too close to it. And don't use this as a reference. We have to use that as a reference, really, because we want the angle to be right so it's cleared. You know, the clearance is there for your side stand. So I think that's what we're going to do. And just eye it in based on that one up there. Let's do that. Hell, I live on the edge. Why not? The edge of what? I don't know. You know what? I got, a, I got an idea. Let me get a different scale for this, or a ruler. I'm going to use this... Um, flexi six inch narrow one and kind of form to the curvature in this. And I'm just going to eye this in and that's going to be about it right there. And yeah, nobody ever said I was an artist. That looks about right and we're going to be cutting it off right there. And we're definitely not making square corners on the inside ones. This The outside corners we don't care about. As long as we have the real estate we're going to round those off. But just like when you're machining a round corner on a lathe uh, like a, uh, an inside corner, rather, on a lathe, like a step. Uh, you always have to leave some material on both sides of it. So the depth side and the step side, everything's got to be a little thicker because the curve is going to consume that. So what we have to do is when we cut this, we're going to have to cut it at a curve instead of a right angle. What I mean is we're going to pick this up right here and... Just draw a straight line across it using these, uh, actually let's do it this way, using the features of this plastic panel as a guide. 
because I want to save that top edge as much as possible. You know, I can I can kind of blend this, but if we cut it straight here, like a 90, we won't have any material left. So we got to make sure that we cut it, you know, as a curve. We'll just eye that in, and then we can dress it up. But this one's not going to be a problem because uh, we're on an outside corner, so it'll be like that. And then the last thing we need to figure out is the tire length of it. Now I could just leave it long, said the wife. The thing is, um, I'd like to get it closer so I have less work. So let's see how I can figure that out. Well, okay, um, I haven't figured that out yet, but uh, relative to that, I'm thinking about this clearance again for the side stand. And this part right here is definitely going to have to be much thinner or much less high. Much, much less high? Okay, that's good grammar. It'll have to be narrower as far as this height goes because even at this angle when you're looking down at it you can see that that screw hole is actually above that plane and again that's clearance for the side stand so we made a mark yesterday as you remember which is you know good good reference at least the approximate height parallel to this bottom edge of where that screw hole was this is why i did that because i wasn't sure if that would come into play so um, I can release this middle clamp now because we have that line gently get it out of the way and then we we'll take a scale just bring it across like this you know eye it in roughly parallel to it you can see that that screw hole would be like uh, if we kind of eye this in like we measured it or eyed it in yesterday I think that screw hole is going to be about, and that would mean that this, this edge would probably be down more like this. But I really don't have an accurate way of measuring. Once I get the main fairing on, which is almost ready to put back on, I did the touch up painting yesterday, it's all dry now. I got to reassemble the uh, signals and the headlight and all that crap, and we'll get that stuck on the front, and then, because this course has to articulate with it, we can lay it in place and see where this lies uh, relative to the side stand and, you know, the rest of the bike on the frame side at least. So I think we're just going to have no choice but to go fat, 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 and then cut it back later. What we can do is cut it out, then put this fairing in, then hold this up to it and get a better idea of where we need to go. At that point, I'm going to need the bike back on the lift here because I'm too old to work on the freaking floor anymore. Let's do that. Let's do that as a plan. So the plan is going to be, we're going to go ahead and cut this out and we'll just come way over here to the edge of this, because um, there's no way it's longer than that. We'll come right over here to the edge of this uh, decal and it'll be down here to here. So the cutout is going to be here. I'm going to leave this little rolled over edge. And, and then here, and then here, actually up to here, and then the dark lines. I'll have to reset up, clean all this mess up, and get that bike back up here. And uh, But beforehand, we'll go ahead and put the uh, front fairing on. The front fairing is actually easier to do when it's sitting on the floor like it is now on the center stand. It's really easier when you're dealing with handlebars and things like that and speedos and stuff to do it right there. So that part will be easy, but as soon as I get that back on, and this is cut. I'll bring you back. We'll have the bike on the lift at that point, and we'll just see how this ties into the bike over there and get an idea where we're going to go with, uh, with it from there. I think that's the best plan. All right, folks, here we are, post-dance to Debbie Gibson. Hey, it's an 80s song, what the hell? And we're back on the lift, as I think I mentioned before. And what I needed to do was get the front fairing back on, you know, the main fairing. 
because of course I cracked. No, nah, it's just the way the glass is. Huh. I'm ADD today, sorry. Okay, so as I said, we got the main fairing back on and it was not without an issue. Uh, there's going to be a separate video on this, but here's the problem with one of the standoffs that this thing goes into that, uh, you know, that, what, what do you want to call it, that bracket frame deal through a, a, a rubber bushing. You can see that this has been butchered some reason or somehow, and I couldn't get the nut on it. So I, I don't remember that being that, you know, I didn't see it when it came off. So anyway, there's another video on how I solved that, so I'm not going to get into it here. But I do have this fixed, obviously mounted. So now I'm going to put you in the stand, and what we need to do is uh, put this side panel up into place because this is really what helps locate it. I got to put the extension on uh, here that comes out for not here. Where is that? I'm sorry, here. So we'll get that in, get this thing hooked up. I'm going to do all it off camera, and then we got to come back and see how this filler piece, uh, this patch piece, is going to lay in. All right, that's the whole purpose of doing this. And like I said, it's like three and a half hours later uh, I had to deal with this. So anyway, uh, enough complaining. Stand by. All right, I've got uh, you know the fasteners in that'll it'll pick up the main fairing and this one you can't really see it's above your uh, you know your well I'll show you you know this one right here I got that one in remember I kind of guessed at where that hole would probably be and remember on the original where before I you know cut this down you saw that little indentation of the difference in the plastic where the hole most likely was and it was probably about a quarter of an inch away from that because it was just the outside edge of it and so what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of lay this in and you get an idea of what the clearance issues are. And that's where I said, to see my dotted line right here? It's probably going to have to be lower to clear the, um, you know, this. So what is, <laughs> what is this? The side stand? All right. Now I'm looking at my little X where it lines up to the, uh, to the bracket. And I'm, 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 I'm off. I'm definitely off, but I'm not a tremendous amount off, maybe a half inch. So for doing a rough scale in. I don't think that's too awfully bad. And uh, cutting this down probably at an angle to kind of make a little bit of a radius right here, uh, sort of on this dotted line, I think is going to work fine. And then we need to knock this down to at least here and bring it up into a radius like we did here. And then uh, we'll have plenty of clearance for the uh, side stand, which is again what that is for. And then we need to, I got to figure out where I'm going to run this exactly. And then we got to cut this down. And then uh, at that point, um, we'll come back because you don't need to see all that. You've seen me cut enough cheese. I mean, you see me cut enough plastic uh, for now. So let me do all that and we'll come back and see where we're at. Actually, you know what? I just realized something. We cannot cut that. Okay, what am I going to do here? Hmm. I just realized something. I realize that we are going to have to shoot this actually we should have brought out further this way ultimately but we couldn't because of the limitations of our plastic so that was it that's as far as we could bring it so because the hole is going to be about right there if I cut this down that far and all the way up we're going to be we're not going to be happy so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up cutting it and I'm going to make a big radius and leave that center section there so there's plenty of material left for that um, bolt. I gotta make sure there's plenty there, good and plenty. All right, I'll calculate all that. I'll calculate it. Oh, if I can get up. And then when I get it all done, we'll come back. Okay, folks, we're almost there. We are very, very close. This is the general scope of it, though. I'm gonna try to do this, whoops, a little too much without moving it around, but you get an idea what I'm talking about here. Yeah, I think she's going to work out fine. The hole is going to end up being about right there in the middle of it, so that's good. Now to get this radius right here, um, I don't have any drum sanders, so I made one, and then I just put it in the Grizzly. drill press and was able to make this um, radius nice. I still have some chamfer to do, not on this line because, well, this line will be beveled. Remember, this will be beveled. And this will be beveled at a later time, just before I put these things together with glue. And uh, remember to get the uh, space we need for the filler. Uh, but So I'm not going to touch those right now, but everywhere else I'm kind of 
beveling it and trying to make it look more like, you know, what you see here, this radius edge. I, I still need to do that. But this is this is what we're looking for right here. There is it kind of broken away. You get an idea. No, yes, no, yes, stop it. What I'm also going to do is tack, I'm going to end up having to tack this in probably with regular super glue just to get this thing in place. There's no way I'm going to be able to use that, um, that really thin glue until I can get this tacked in place because it needs to follow the, it needs to be bent and I'm not going to heat it and bend it. I can just do that by tacking it, I think. I don't know. I may try, but gee whiz, after all this work, I don't want to take a chance of, uh, of cracking it or something, but we'll figure that out. So it has to have this radius in like this or this bend so it matches, you know, it goes kind of like this. So yeah, we'll, we'll put that bend in somehow just before we, or at the time that we're gluing it, I guess. I don't know yet. I'll have to figure it out. But that's going to be it for this one because it's getting kind of long. And so I wanted to stop it here. So I guess the next part will not guess the next part will be i'll take this back off I'll, I'll just do all the finished sanding off off camera but we'll get this thing glued in place and then um then you'll see it finished so the next video shouldn't be nearly as long because we've done all the uh, hard stuff another day we'll pick it up and we'll get the thing um and we'll get the thing put in in that video i'll show you how we pick up a hole from the back side and make it extremely accurate can't do that until this is attached so watch for that in the next video. So if you like what you see, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, ring the bell on the channel. You get notified when I put more stuff up. Till next time, thanks for watching. Don't just repair, restore. Catch you on the next video.